Let's wake up our brains. So let's um, start this session with trying to compare and contrast one of my favorite questions, and I love this picture. I don't think I'd want to be the penguin, but I just think that this is appropriate, especially considering we have so much snow. But anyway, getting back to the compare and contrast. See if you can think about um, and actually put in your notes as a good um, warm-up activity. What's the difference and similarities between a gene and an allele, a character and a trait, homozygous and heterozygous, and monohybrid cross and a dihybrid cross? These are really important vocabulary words that you want to have a feeling of their similarities, their differences, because you know how much I love compare and contrast questions. So I would just take a moment to jot some of your thoughts down on this, and once you're done that, come right back and we'll continue. So today we're going to talk about autosomal recessive and autosomal dominant diseases, and we've already reviewed a lot of this um, background material, but it's always important to kind of include that when you start a new topic. So as a reminder, humans have 46 chromosomes and we have 23 pairs. And of those pairs, 22 are autosomes and one pair are sex chromosomes. And so the last session that we did was sex-linked traits. And so those genes are located on the sex chromosomes. So chromosomes number 23, whether that be two X's or an X and a Y. So each chromosome carries a specific information of an allele, we already know about that, and there can be one or two or more alleles for that particular trait. So examples of autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive, this is what we're going to focus in on today because we've already done sex-linked traits. So we've not only talked about these sex-linked traits, but we've actually done Punnett squares to try to figure out how things are inherited for uh, offspring. And we spent a lot of time talking about color blindness as a sample. So color blindness and hemophilia and Duchenne's muscular dystrophy are traits that are located on the X chromosome. Those are chromosome number 23. All these other ones are located on different chromosomes and that could be anywhere from chromosome number 1 to chromosome number 22. These are the ones that are dominant, Huntington's dwarfism and Marfan's, and these are our recessive diseases. So yes, you will need to know these because if on the exam it lists a disease, you need to know where you put that in your brain. Is that an autosomal dis dominant disease? Is that an autosomal recessive? Or is that a sex link trait? So try to be familiar with these and if you feel like a flashcard would be helpful, it's a great idea on one side maybe put autosomal dominant and on the other side list them and then just get really familiar with how where what categories each of those diseases would go into. So for autosomal um, diseases or conditions, the dominant diseases will always have that disease unless the only exception would be if they don't even have any allele. So a homozygous dominant individual will definitely have the disease, heterozygous will have the disease, and again, only the homozygous recessive will not. And some people have asked me in the past, well, if you have two of those alleles, does that somehow make it worse? Generally, no, um, because most of those um, conditions, once you have one, you just have it. So it's not like any worse if you have two. Um, so here, just focus in on the heterozygous will have it and the homozygous dominant will have it as well. So we're going to make an assumption that anytime we talk about a homozygous dominant, I'm sorry, every time we talk about an autosomal dominant disease, that we're going to, in our mind, use this um, heterozygous. And actually, I'm going to put this here as this is how we're going to write it. So let's put a superscript here. So we're going to say that even if this person has one chromosome that carries that um, disorder and one that doesn't, because this is dominant, it's going to overshadow everything and that person is going to actually have the disease. So for autosomal recessive, they may or may not have the disease it, or illness. It just depends 
how many of those alleles they get again because it's recessive. If it's recessive it doesn't do all the talking whereas the dominant ones do all the talking. So homozygous dominant won't have the disease in an autosomal recessive. Heterozygous will not have it but they carry it and again it's silent because it doesn't do all the talking and the homozygous recessive will definitely have it because they have those two alleles both of those alleles are recessive there's no other dominant allele around so that person actually has the disease so here we have a ho um, two chromosomes together this one would be from your mom and this one would be from your dad so for these autosomal diseases we're going to use these little um, symbols to represent that C would be for a chromosome this particular allele right here would be our normal allele and this particular allele has that little letter one or little number one I should say and that denotes that that chromosome has the gene for that particular condition so we have three possibilities they could be CC they could be C prime C or they could be C prime C prime so those are all of the possibilities for both the autosomal dominant and the autosomal recessive. But again, remember, we're going to use this one. We're going to assume this one for our autosomal dominant person because this one would be very, very rare. But for the autosomal recessive, all of these are possibilities. So if this person had the gene for cystic fibrosis and this was their genes that we found in their body, would they actually have the disease? or not. And what if this was a person that had this gene for Huntington's and this gene that was normal? Think about that a little bit and then pause the program and write down what you think. If you had one gene for cystic fibrosis and one gene for not, would you have the disease? And then for Huntington's, if you had one allele for that disease and one that didn't, would you have it? And then come back and we'll see how you did. So if you said that cystic fibrosis, this person would carry the disease, you are correct. Yay! So if you said the person with Huntington's uh, disease would have, because they had this one, they would actually have it, you too are correct. So remind me and I can get you a sticker when you come to class for that. So that's really good. So now we're going to practice some. So here we have a person that is a carrier and a person that is normal. The disease here is Tay-Sachs, so that's an autosomal recessive, and that's why I said this person carries it. So in your notes what I'd like you to do is create this Punnett square box, put your C prime C, 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 figure out what that would be, and then um, calculate how many of their children would have the disease. When you're done that, and make sure you put your answer in percentages and put that off to the side, and then we'll see how everybody did. So this is how your Punnett square should look. So here's our C prime C, C and C. And actually here if we look at this data, there's not any of the children. So 0% of the children would actually have Tay-Sachs. However, 50% would carry it. So they're still going to carry that gene on to their offspring and their offspring and offspring, so forth and so on. So no one, 0% has the disease. So if I asked about phenotype, it would be 0%. If I asked about genotype, then you would say 50% are normal and 50% are carriers. So now here's what you're going to do for homework. You're going to ca calculate the following crosses and I've put all of these different samples together. But for each of these four, you're going to do two different sets. One is going to be for dwarfism and I'd like it if you could number please your um, Punnett squares 1 through 4 so this one would be 1, 2, 3, 4. Do all of those Punnett square boxes for dwarfism so you have to figure out is that autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant. Then for that each one of those Punnett squares you're going to tell me how many of the offspring would have the disease. Then you're going to do another four boxes so then they'll be numbered 5, 6, 7, and 8 and those are going to be for PKU and I'm just going to double check that I put PKU in this yes I did so you guys are good so you can always go back 
and figure out where does this, is this autosomal dominant, is this autosomal recessive? Do those four Punnett squares, make sure that you again you number them, and then for each Punnett square box, tell me how many children would actually have the disease. And then bring that to class and then we'll review it. Good luck, I hope it goes well.